Hey everyone, welcome to another physics tutorial. Uh, due to a request that I've had from another YouTube user, I'm going to be showing you how to create spaceship kind of movement using the physics functions. So if you've ever played the classic Asteroids game, that's the kind of movement I'm going to be creating using the physics functions today. I'll also show you how to um, shoot bullets and yeah. Okay, so to start off with, um, you're going to first uh, create one object called Object Static Parent, and that has nothing in it. And then another object called Object Dynamic Parent. In Object Dynamic Parent, we've got nothing but a collision with itself and the static parent, and both of these are just a comment. That's to supply our collisions when it comes to the other objects. And yeah. Okay, um, for making any other objects, you're going to want to make your sprites. So I've got just a simple 32 by 32 triangle for my spaceship. As you can see there, that's centered. My bullet is just a 8 by 8 square. Just a black square that's centered, and then I have a asteroid which started off as 64 by 64, but when I drew it, I cropped it down. But after I much just drawn a crummy little asteroid there. Okay. Now, for the first object you're going to want to make is the object for your ship. This is like controlling everything else. Okay, so before, don't add any code or anything, just create your object, give it a sprite and tick uses physics then after that you can go modify collision shape and set up the triangle shape for it then you can just tick that off then you're going to want to make an object for your bullet so obj bullet one's called give it the sprite tick uses physics and give it a box collision shape or if it's a circle bullet then you can give it a circle collision shape the collision shape doesn't matter too much in this Okay. Um, another thing uh, is the same with the ship is you're going to want to parent both of them to the object dynamic parent. Okay, so with object bull, parent that to object dynamic parent, and with object ship, parent that to object dynamic parent as well. Okay, then make an object for your asteroid. So just call it OBJ asteroid. Give it the sprite. Tick uses physics. Give it the shape collision. Um, shape and then modify the mask and outline it however you've got. Now you can only do 8 points so obviously you're not going to be able to outline it perfectly but just do something basic like that. Okay and then parent that to object dynamic parent as well. Okay now we can go into the ship and start using some code. Okay in the create event set up some variables so Axel stands for acceleration and that's the amount of force I apply to um, the object when we're moving forward. Rot stands for rotation, that's the amount of rotation force I apply. Right, left, forward, backward and shoot. Those are just my keyboard setups, so for right it's VK right, left is VK left, so that's to rotate your ship. Forward is VK up and backwards is VK down, that's for moving forwards and backwards and shoot your VK space and obviously that's for shooting. Okay. Now we're gonna leave alarm zero for now and we go to step. And in here all this is movement. Oh right, all of that is movement, not that. Okay. So if keyboard check, right? Physics apply by torque, right. Now what this does for anyone that doesn't know is physic apply torque like just applies torque to the instance that you're using the code in. So in this it's going to make the ship start spinning right because we're at um applying a positive number. And rot is our rotation variable that we set before. Um it's if this is too fast in your game and you don't like that speed then just change the value and it won't affect like anything, it won't give you any errors or anything like that. Okay. Straight beneath that we've got physics um, sorry, not physics. If keyboard check left, then physics apply torque, and instead of rot, it's minus rot. So that way we're going to be turning left instead of right. Okay. If keyboard check forward, then physics apply local force zero, zero, axel, which is our acceleration variable, 
and zero again. Now, because this is physics apply local force, it always pushes you in the same direction according to a vector that Game Maker has. I can't, I, I can't really explain it properly. Um, basically, the x local and y local is always relative to the center x and y of your object. So in this case, we'll be applying the force to the middle of the um, ship, which is zero and zero. If you were going to apply it, say, um, centered y, but to the left a bit of your object, then you'd go like um, minus thirty-two zero XL and then zero, and then that would apply it further over to the left. Okay. So those are your local x and y coordinates for the force. Um, then x force local is the amount of force that you're applying. So in this case, we're wanting to go forward, so we apply a positive number. And then that's on the x-axis because x, like positive x, um, is the uh, zero rotation, I guess, for Game Maker. Um, pretty, pretty much just the front of your sprite or object is the positive x. And then for um, y, we don't want to be moving along that, so we've just got like zero. And it's pretty much the same for backwards, except instead of applying a positive acceleration force, we apply a negative to send us back in the other direction. Okay, if keyboard check shoot, so that's our shoot key. If alarm zero is lower than one, then alarm zero equals room speed divided by four. Okay, so this means that if we're pressing our um, shoot button, which for me is the space key, it will then check if alarm zero's value is lower than one, and if it is, it will set alarm zero to room speed divided by four, so it'll make alarm zero go off four times a second. Okay, and just before I go and show alarm zero, I'll show you the screen wrap code. So what this does is it, um, say you flew off to the right of the screen, then you would come back in on the left. When, like, off the top of the screen, come straight back in at the bottom, so pretty much all it is is if physics position x, which is your physic, like physics exposition, exposition in the room, well, I'm getting my words mixed up a bit. Okay, um, so yeah, if that is higher than room width plus 32, so the plus 32 is to make sure that you don't really see the jump, so the whole object's going to be off the screen before it jumps over to the other side. Okay, so if it's higher than room width plus 32, then you set your um, physics position x to minus 32. So as soon as you go off too far to the right, it's, uh, it shoots back over to the left. And generally, it's the same thing for everything else except different values. So um, for going from left to right, you want to check if the object is below minus 32, which is to the left of the room. And if it is, send it to the right, which would be room width plus 32. Um, and then same for the up and down, so except instead of changing x values, you're changing y values instead. Okay, um, now we'll go to our alarm zero for our um, shooting. Okay, so this is where our bullets get shot. So remembering back in the step event that um, when we're pressing our shoot key, it checks the alarm and as long as it's um, lower than one then it'll set the alarm to room speed to butter buffer. Okay, and when the alarm goes off it's with instance create x plus length direction 32 phy rotation times minus one and then y plus length direction y 32 phy rotation times minus one and we're creating object bullet. And I'll go back to that in a second, try and explain it for you. Um, for now though, when this bullet's created, the width function pretty much puts you inside the create event, or not necessarily the create event, it pretty much just puts you inside of that object. So as soon as it's created, all this code here gets executed inside that object, not the one we're programming like this code into now. So, phy bullet equals true. Um, 
setting bullet to true. I uh, can't remember exactly how to explain it. Pretty much just gets um the box to the physics engine to do like a couple extra calculations to make sure that like a really fast moving object like a bullet doesn't like start going through things because it's moving too fast. Okay, um PHY rotation equals other dot PHY rotation. Now when using the with statement or function, whatever you want to call it, other automatically um, represents the object that you're using the with statement in. So I'll just comment this in for you. Here we are inside of our object bullet that we just made. So it's object bullet. Okay? So inside of object bullet, other is equal to our ship because that's what we're using it in. So it'd be object ship. So down here we've got object, yeah, we've got object bullets, PHY rotation equals other, which is object ship, so object ship dot PHY rotation. So we're setting the bullets rotation to the same as the ship's rotation. Okay, hopefully you got that. Okay, and then physics apply local force just like we did to the ship. Um, except this time we're applying a force of 1000 to it to send it flying pretty quickly. Okay, and that's shooting our object. Now, length direction x. This is not the easiest to explain. Basically, um, 32 is the distance from the ship that the um, that the object bullet object will be created at. So let's say I get paint. This time I've got paint on this is a new computer, so I don't actually know. Uh, there it is. Okay, so let's say I've got paint. Okay, so this can be our object here. So that is our bullet object. No. Sorry. Wrong. That is our ship object. And then its X and Y would be centered just here. So that is its X and Sorry, let's just pretend that that's a Y. Okay, so X and Y is there. Okay, so what length direction X does is um, it takes its X and Y and then it like gets the vector according to the length that you set and the direction that you set. So let's say just for now that this object is facing that way, just normally, so that's zero. So if we go back here, I'll go back into this. As you can see, we've got 32 for the length and PHY rotation times minus 1. Okay, so 32 is 32 pixels from this object. So let's say that 32 is about here. Okay, so it would be creating object bullet at that circle. Okay, and the root, and um, in this case, PHY rotation is equal to 0. So um, it doesn't have like an angle. So it just creates the object there and then sends it flying that way. Um, but as you can see in this, we also use length direction y. Now whenever you're using length direction functions, depending on what you're doing, you're pretty much always going to want to use both length direction x and y to get um, your object flying in the right direction or being created at the right spot. Okay, so let's say that we had um, that, that we had like some rotation on this box, so it was a bit like this. Okay, so that, that can be our new box and it's X and Y is here. And we're still like it's rotated that way, so its front is now here. So it's now facing that way. Now without having to change any code, this bullet object automatically gets created here. Because we've rotated and um, length direction x and length direction y gets the vector for us. So that's 32 in front of this box, and the PHY rotation would be something like 45 degrees or whatever. And so it gets created there instead and flies that way. Now, I 
wasn't the best explanation I know, but hopefully you got what I meant. Um, yeah, if if you have a look at the game maker help file, it was probably a better explanation, but that's my one. Anyway, so yeah, basically what it does is it creates the bullet 32 pixels in front of the ship object and sends it on its way. Okay, so that's our shooting, and that is our ship object finished. Okay, now in our bullet. I have a step event and all this does is destroys the object once it goes out of the room on either side. So if sorry <coughs> if X is higher than room width plus thirty two then or sorry if X is higher than room width plus thirty two or X is lower than minus thirty two or Y is lower than minus thirty two or Y is higher than room room width plus thirty two then destroy the bullet. So if it's outside the room, destroy it. And that saves memory. Then in object asteroid, I've got the exact same code from the ship. So if you've already written it out, you can just copy and paste it straight in, and that again just wraps it across the screen. And with that, all you've got to do now is create a room. Make sure that you tick the room is physics world button. You don't want any gravity, so um, set, I think it's normally set to 10. Set um, your Y gravity at zero and place in your object. So I'll just replace these to give you an example, I guess. Okay, so we've got your ship, you put that in the middle or wherever you want, and then you just put some asteroids around it. Obviously, there's a really simple asteroids game that doesn't spawn the asteroids or anything, like it's really simple. So it's just something, so you've got the idea and you can build off it. Okay, but yeah, once we've done that, you can just run the game. Excuse me, and then here's your game here. Okay, so left and right arrow keys rotates the ship. Forwards and backwards. Um, yeah, it makes you move forwards and backwards. So move forwards that way, backwards that way. And because of the way the physics engine works, it actually seems like you're in space, like you push forward that way and you don't really stop. To really make it seem real, what you can do is I just exit out of this. Go to object ship and your line dampening and angular dampening set that to zero. So then there's like no real friction as it would be in space. Anyway, and I'll just show you the shooting. So rotate towards an asteroid and just press space and we've got shooting. As you can see when the bullets hit it, it like starts moving the asteroid and everything, so we can just hold that down and keep shooting. Yeah, like the asteroids get hit and rotate, like as a board. It's pretty physically accurate. But yeah, that's really simple way to do it. <coughs> okay, um, hope you learned something from this. Um, I know when I first started making tutorials, I used to build the games from scratch and like take you through the whole process. But lately, I've just been taking you through pre-made games. Now the reason for this is because like if someone sends me a request or if I just like want to show you a tutorial, it's a lot easier to make the game, make sure everything works, and then take you through the code instead of like making it, making it from scratch and coming up with errors and then having to go back in the tutorial. It's just a lot easier to do and makes things more clean. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Hope you learned something. Uh, like the video if you want more tutorials. Subscribe. Um, like Facebook page. All that. And I'll see you next time.